This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on The South Today, a memorial to conscientious objector Archibald Baxter has been unveiled in Dunedin. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern is set to receive an emotional plea from a young Dunedin girl. And we discover there are proper ways to tread water if you want to survive in the sea. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. A new memorial to those who didn't fight in World War I was unveiled in Dunedin today. Named after conscientious objector and local man Archibald Baxter, the opening ceremony was attended by a top government representative. The Deputy Prime Minister Grant Robertson and other dignitaries were joined by a large crowd for the official opening of the Archibald Baxter Memorial Peace Garden and National Monument to Conscientious Objectors in Dunedin today. Peace advocate Kevin P. Clements says it's a fitting addition to other monuments around the country. Yeah, there's, there, there are thousands of monuments in New Zealand to uh, war, war victims and, uh, and no, no monument at all to those who chose a different path. The monument is a stylised representation of local identity and conscientious objector Archibald Baxter enduring field punishment number one, which saw him tied to an angled stake for many hours on the enemy front during World War One. And in New Zealand we have a lot of memorials to those who fought and that's the right thing. But it's very timely to have one to those who showed the courage of their convictions to be conscientious objectors. And Archibald Baxter was, you know, a person who showed it. Enormous courage, courage and leadership. Grant Robinson more or less apologised on behalf of the state uh, for the punishment that was meted out to Baxter. Those behind the memorial and garden hope it will inspire visitors on the way of peace. In Dunedin, the South today. The Delta strain of COVID-19 has crept even closer to the South. Confirmation of an initial two community transmission cases in Christchurch yesterday led to a scare at the McRae's mine in East Otago. The mine closed parts of its operation yesterday afternoon for a deep cleaning yesterday, when a site contractor learned their partner was considered a close contact of one of the Christchurch cases. A spokesperson for McRae says the deep clean of common areas in the processing plant included crib rooms and meeting rooms, as well as buses used to transport workers to the mine. The contractor and their partner have been advised to get a test and isolate until results are returned. Jacinda Ardern is set to receive a letter from an eight-year-old Dunedin girl who is missing her father. Emily Harrop's dad is stuck in Sri Lanka, having missed out five times on getting a spot in managed isolation to return home. Eight-year-old Dunedin girl Amelie Harrop is really missing her father. After working on contract overseas, he's been unable to get a spot in managed isolation to come home. So Amelie is going straight to the top, writing an emotional letter to the Prime Minister. Right now he is a physio for the Sri Lankan cricket team and I really miss him. I haven't seen him since May and this makes me feel sad. Her mother, Gwen Harrop, says her husband is currently in Sri Lanka and has tried five times to get a position in managed isolation and quarantine using the voucher system. The stress is taking its toll on the family. We're really, really trying and we're struggling. And I know there'd be lots of families that would have dads that work abroad that are in the same boat. Um, and the mental health is, is quite taxing on the family, I think. Amelie's father, Brett Harrop, has a two-year contract as a lead physiotherapist for Sri Lanka cricket. He'd originally planned to visit his family several times a year while building up his resume overseas, before hopefully working with New Zealand cricket. We think he'll end up working with the Black Caps down the track and to bring his best skill set to cricket New Zealand. 
He's got to go abroad to get the experience. The Harrops recognise there's other families more deserving of a spot in MIQ, but they argue there's also people coming back from holiday, and the current system doesn't discriminate between cases. After discussing the family's situation, Amelie decided to write directly to Jacinda Ardern and explain the impact the MIQ system is having on her family. I think, you know, the children pick up on a lot of stuff that we don't realise. And they hear bits on the news and they hear bits on phone calls and I think they like to be a part of helping. And it's, it's a whole family situation, isn't it? Everybody wants to do what they can to make it better. Yesterday, the government announced changes to the MIQ system, including shorter stays, which should open up an extra 1,500 spaces a month. In Dunedin, the South Today. A master plan for Queenstown's Ladies' Mile has been adopted despite overwhelming opposition by local residents. After more than 18 months of public consultation over the issue, Queenstown Lakes District Councillors voted 8 to 1 in favour of the master plan. The decision comes despite just 5% of the more than 500 submissions being in support. The plan seeks to proactively guide the development of the land beside the main arterial route into Queenstown, beside Lake Hayes and the Shotover River. The area could see almost two and a half thousand new high or medium density homes, plus a commercial centre and potentially two new schools. A Dunedin researcher has discovered which method of treading water is the best to use if you get into trouble while swimming. Out of the number of various water treading techniques, it turns out the egg beater stroke uses the least, late, uh, least energy while you wait for help. Kiwis love going to the beach or swimming in rivers and lakes over the summer, but unfortunately some get into trouble and end up having to tread water until they're rescued. Knowing which water treading technique takes the least effort could help save lives, as a lot of drownings occur after exhaustion. Research by Tina Van Doan from the University of Otago School of Physical Education found the egg beater technique is the least exhausting of the water treading methods. People tend to do different types of movements when they are trying to tread water. Um, for example, an upright breaststroke technique that is very simple and easy to execute or a kicking movement with the legs, etc. So we wanted to actually compare them against each other to really find out which one is most economic. Van Doan is planning to investigate her initial findings in more depth, with research potentially challenging the way water safety is taught to youngsters. We can inform teaching, water safety teaching and swim instruction. So what kids learn when they first learn to tread water will, ho will hopefully become more evidence-based. And because swimmers need to relax and keep their wits about them if they're in trouble in deep water, the egg beater technique was also found to be the least mentally draining. All right, so when people um, are in a drowning scenario, they often have to multitask, so they don't just have to perform movements, but they also have to make decisions and um, process a lot of information. So we tested also how cognitively challenging each of those movements is. Van Doan's initial study was limited to a small group of experienced swimmers, with her next step to see whether the same technique is the best option for inexperienced swimmers as well. In Dunedin, the South today. Still to come on the South today, ACC suspends two Dunedin staff members for inappropriately sharing client information. And we catch up with the Wilkinson family taking on an ambitious project.
risk of developing melanoma skin cancer. You owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Welcome back. Dunedin-based cancer diagnostics company Pacific Edge has confirmed its new CEO. Scientist Dr Peter Meinches is a New Zealand citizen who is currently living in Boston. He brings extensive expertise in diagnostics and commercial leadership, along with a track record for commercialising new biotechnologies. Pacific Edge is now in the growth stage of its business after years of research, with its CX bladder cancer diagnosis tests being adopted by international health providers. Dr. Manchis replaces longtime CEO David Darling, who is retiring. He'll take up the new role in early January. ACC has suspended a couple of Dunedin staff members for inappropriately sharing client information. Two Dunedin staff have been stood down by the Accident Compensation Corporation for allegedly sharing private client information in a social media group. It follows ACC standing down 12 staff in its Hamilton office pending an investigation. It's alleged the workers were sharing details of clients' injuries and mocking them in a private Snapchat group. Acting Chief Executive Mike Tully says the ACC became aware of a further incident in Dunedin involving colleagues inappropriately discussing client names. Their access to ACC's systems and information has been removed, with Tully describing the workers' behaviour as totally unacceptable. ACC employs about 480 staff in Dunedin. In Dunedin, the South Today. Few family projects are as ambitious as the one the Wilkinson family had begun turning a historic Dunedin church into luxury apartments. Roger and Pauline Wilkinson bought the old church building in North East Valley early last year, moving in just before the first COVID-19 lockdown hit. There's more than meets the eye for a former Melbourne-based family who have ambitious plans to transform the former St David's Presbyterian Church in North East Valley. One and two people in each apartment so that it doesn't change the character of the neighbourhood, which we're quite concerned about, and also concerned about the building. It doesn't lend itself to being 48 flats full of people. It's, it'll just be a nice neighbourhood, a nice environment. The Wilkinsons had been living in Melbourne prior to lockdown last year and planned to travel to Dunedin once a month to visit family and help out with school runs. Oh, we're picking the kids up from the school three doors down yeah. and uh, looking around for a weekend, uh, bed and breakfast or something, and... Pauline said, oh, this place will be perfect. I said, don't be stupid, we'll never be able to afford something like this. After buying the 19th century church building early last year for about $330,000, the family has been working hard on renovation plans. A lot of time so far has been spent sourcing resource consent, council permits, pricing and finance. Um, it'll probably be a four-year project in total. Whether we do that in one, two or four hits, we'll find out, COVID depending and all those other things. Get back to normal life, it might be different. So. The church building near Baldwin Street was previously in private ownership, branded as the Maker's Place. The English-style church was built in 1885 with additions by Edward Anscombe in 1912. It has a fully working bell tower and is a Category 2 listed building with Heritage New Zealand. In Dunedin, the South Today. 
Otago University researchers have been studying the issue of concussion in rugby, from grassroots players through to the Otago and Southland provincial teams. Specialised mouthguards have been handed out to Southern players, measuring the impacts when players collide or hit the deck. It may just be a game, but concussion in sport is a serious business. New Zealand rugby researcher Daniel Salmon has fitted many of these Otago players over the years with custom mouthguards which measure and track their performance. If the proximity sensor is close to the teeth, what happens is it's set at a threshold of 5G, so if I'm running along and, you know, bump shoulders with somebody or make a tackle and go into contact, what that does is it triggers the mouth guard to capture data. Players from Otago and the Stags are taking part in a pilot study funded by New Zealand Rugby, World Rugby and Otago University. 700 mouth guards were handed out this year to players from beginners through to professionals. Researchers hoping to learn how to make the sport safer and potentially save lives. You know and that, that is always the hope is that you know with this training technique, you know, if we, we better understand the game, then, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can use this to better coach how, you know, men, women, our high school kids play. Um, and then, you know, ideally that makes it safer and potentially minimizes, you know, um, injuries that can happen. It's been a first introduction to rugby for the Canadian researcher who grew up watching gridiron. The high-tech mouth guards collect data when impacts occur. Early results show female players are more likely to suffer head injuries and Salmon wonders if earlier training might help. Using some sort of intervention program, whether it be, you know, neck strengthening exercise to try and, you know, strengthen neck when they go into impact or looking at, you know, tackle technique training or how to training these girls how to fall properly. So potentially you're reducing the impacts you see when their head does connect with the ground. So far the studies have been taking place in Otago, but researchers are ready to spread the net further and study what happens when bodies collide on the field. In Dunedin, the South Today. After the break on the South Today, COVID-19 sees the cancellation of another popular southern event and we take a look at your weather heading into the weekend. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Welcome back. The next Burt Munro Challenge scheduled for February 2022 has been cancelled due to the volatility of the COVID-19 situation. 
Organisers say they would lose several hundred thousand dollars if the event had to be cancelled at the last minute. If that happened, they don't believe they could afford to stage any future events. The annual gathering, which this year was held in April, attracts more than 600 competitors across various events and draws more than 20,000 spectators. The knives are no longer nipping at the kilts of the Highlanders. The licence to operate the Super Rugby franchise expired this year. It's been confirmed the Highlanders investor group of Shane Drummond, Raymond Burke and Warren Goddard have bought the shares of former director Matt Davey. He owned failed ticketing company Ticket Rocket. The investor trio now owns 77% of the club, with former Lion Nathan chief executive Peter King buying a 10% share. The balance is held by the three provincial unions that make up the Highlanders region. New Zealand Rugby has granted the group a licence to operate the rugby franchise in perpetuity in Otago and Southland. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. A memorial to conscientious objector Archibald Baxter has been unveiled in Dunedin. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern is set to receive an emotional plea from a young Dunedin girl. And we discover there are proper ways to tread water if you want to survive in the sea. And now it's time for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Looking at the situation, we can expect warmer temperatures tomorrow as northwesterly airflow increases over the region ahead of a cold front in the Tasman Sea. This front will move over the region on Sunday, followed by colder southwesterly airflow. Looking at the northwest of the South Island, clouds and rain are due for west coasters this weekend. Both Westport and Greymouth are looking at 17 degree highs, with rain in Westport and Greymouth escapes the rain but will have cloud. Moving to the northeast, spring weather shows its unpredictable nature in this region. Nelson will see the sun with a high of 20 degrees, while Blenheim is a bit warmer with 22 degrees but will have scattered showers. Moving down to Canterbury, it's a cloudy day for all here. Kaikoura heads for 19, Christchurch 17 and Ashburton sees the region high of 22 degrees. Looking at what's in store for the southern towns, along the coast, the Catlins and Balclutha can expect fresh northerlies with cloud increasing throughout the day. The Catlins sees a high of 19, Balclutha 20, while in Lumsden and Gore there's fresh northwesterlies with rain later on and a high of 18 degrees. Travelling westwards to the central lakes, Wanaka and Alexandra can expect freshening northwesterlies with increasing cloud and a high of 19 degrees. Queenstown also can expect freshening northwesterlies but with rain later on and a high of 18 degrees. And it will be cooler in Tiana with fresh northwesterlies, rain and a high of 16 degrees. Popping up to the northern towns along the coast, moderate northeasterlies with high cloud. Timaru, your high is 24, and Oamaru slightly longer with 22. Further inland, Twaiswa and Amarama are in for freshening northwesterlies with increasing cloud and a high of 19. In Dunedin, there's some cloud tonight with an overnight low of 9 degrees. It should be fine for most of tomorrow with high cloud increasing during the day. North to north easterly winds become fresh and gusty. Temperatures will be warmer with some rain spreading off the western ranges tomorrow night, looking at a high of 21 and a low of 12. And it should be fine at first on Sunday with mild northerlies dying out. But colder southwesterlies will start freshening from around the middle of the day, bringing some low cloud and light showers, a high of 20 and a low of 7. And in Invercargill, mostly fine with an overnight low of 9 degrees. Northwesterlies will start freshening tomorrow. It's a cloudy day with some rain developing later on. Expect a period of strong winds tomorrow night, a high of 19 and a low of 10. And it's mostly cloudy on Sunday with scattered showers and a high of 15 and a low of 6.
And that's all our news for this Friday and indeed the week. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. Remember to like and subscribe to Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube so you can receive notifications of up-to-date content. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.